What's up, crafters? Back. <sighs> What's up, crafters? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be building the Halo Reach bicep out of EVA foam. So, if that's why you're here, go ahead and continue watching. Back to business for the back section. The It's really not that complicated. It's really just a piece that you cut out and you just kind of stick it there. I wouldn't stress about this. Just mat, um, here's a map or guide for the bevel angles. Just go ahead and match that, glue it together, and you should be good to go. Now for this round bit that goes on the back, so you're wearing it, I call it the back because it's the back of the arm. When you're putting this together, there's a couple things to look out for. One, you're gonna wanna match your bevels to the map. I'll go ahead and show that on the screen now. Now one of the things to look out for in this build is the seam, is the seam lines that come through the middle of the back section here, or the round bit section. And that's because those lines aren't naturally hidden by the detail that's in the model. So you're gonna wanna pick, appear, pay extra close attention to those. When you're cutting out that little square bit, you don't have to cut it out all the way. Just cut out the bottom U shape. Really take your time with it because you're gonna wanna hide those details. Don't, the model template calls for cutting like a straight, like a angle and then a straight line down and then another angle. Don't do that. Cut a straight, cut just an angled wedge. Uh, that way when you go to close the gap and glue those two pieces together, there won't be some weird open gap at the end. But I'll tell you now, we're going to hide those details later using some free handing, but We'll save that for the for later on in the video. One thing I found useful is after I cut out one of the pieces for this, so there's two main pieces. We're ignoring the very bottom, but the big round section and then that triangle type curvy shape. I found it useful to cut one of those out first and then line it up against a piece of flat foam so that I would underst understand how foam would match up with the way my angles were cut, that way I knew how steep and which direction to cut the following angles. As for the front piece, uh, this really isn't too complicated. Uh, it's really just match your bevels and put the pieces together. You may find it helpful if you try to put more bevel on the pieces on the side here rather than in this center piece because these little uh, bat ears at the top, if these are too thin, then you'll have a hard time 
Um, just keeping the, the shape up here, so you're gonna to wanna to avoid thinning that too much, so I'd recommend a strong bevel on the sides. But other than that, just make sure that these edges are flush. Uh, we'll talk about this a this little bit later on. Uh, that's it. Match the bevels, put it together. Okay, now let's talk about the center hole side. That is what makes this the hardest part of the entire build. And I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring my notes up and we're gonna, we're gonna reference, we're gonna reference these notes. First thing I wanna say is the template itself looks complicated and it may look like there's an easier way to do it if you just kind of cut out the circle or whatever shape you want to call it just cut some stuff out in full foam rather than all these small little pieces and then just glue stuff on top of it i tried that it went very poorly so long story short i recommend going with the template and not trying to do your own thing that said I was just about to counter myself and there was giant thunder. <laughs> There's uh, this little doodad at the bottom here. I call him the little foam dude because when you're cutting out the template, it kind of looks... I would recommend putting all, your, all the pieces side by side to put that together because that is easier to do with a half free-handed template. So just put your, put the, the templates side by side like this, and then later on we'll put, we'll just put a bar on top of it. But you're gonna wanna pay really close attention to your bevels on this piece and really match the guide because you're going to want to cut out the sides of this separately so that the angles and bevels will line up. So while you're cutting out this circle, half circle piece, 
You're also gonna wanna cut out the filler in the middle, in between, in between the templates right away. And after you cut this out, you're going to need, want to re-bevel it. So it's kind of like doing a valley cut and you could do a valley cut if you wanted, where you just cut the cut a V shape out of the back and just bend it. I chose not to do a valley cut because it lets me get a much crisper edge and this piece really likes the precision. While you're cutting out pieces, or cutting out the bevels for this M piece, you're gonna to wanna to try to really envision how these, how this M is going to fit onto your prop and make, make that make sense in your head. You can probably get away with just cutting it, just not cutting the M, just make a rectangle and just glue it to the bottom. Uh, your depth will be off, but that should probably work too. Uh, I just didn't wanna mess up my depth. For the top bar thing above the M, uh, I didn't worry about cutting out three different templates and then trying to get them all angled and pushed in together. I just cut out one rec one shape, one bar, and I just cut that down the middle and I just, when I glued it together, I just offset one of the pieces. I just, the one in the middle, I just moved it down and that, that was good enough for me. And I'll show you. See, it looks fine. When you're cutting out this centerpiece, right here, the, the big circle U shape, you're gonna want a really strong bevel on that because the, pe the ring that you put around it is going to have a hard time with a, having its own strong bevel. You're gonna kinda wanna be lighter on the bevel on that so you have enough foam on that part of the prop to continue filling gaps, providing adhes adhesion, structure, and etc. So bevel that as strongly as you can and then line it up, see how much of a bevel you need on the ring thing around it and go from there. Speaking of that ring thing, uh, I would, while you're cutting out, I would recommend avoiding cutting out all of the small inlets right away. I would just cut out one giant, I just cut out one giant ring, and then I cut out all of those other ringlets out after the fact. Just cause to me that se just seems a little bit easier. You don't have to, but that's what I would recommend. All of our parts cut out now, according to my notes. Let's hope that's not wrong. And let's get into assembly and start gluing stuff together. I'm not going to show me applying the glue, but just know that I'm using barge, but in the sake of saving my time and saving your time, I just left all of the glue application out, so we're just applying the parts. All right, so gluing this little, that little foam dude I was talking about, uh, we're going to use the tricks or, that, we, that I talked about in my Making Invisible Seams video. If you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and check that out. I would recommend watching it. Wait, wait it shows up there. <laughs> I would recommend watching that before um, building this piece in particular because it has a lot of 
tricks in there that I think help a lot with having to avoid hiding seams and such after the part is built, which you shouldn't really have to do all that much. So check that out and then come back, resume watching this, and then you'll know how to put this little foam dude together. When you're putting these middle bits on, or you're putting this ring, the larger ring halves on, don't connect it all the way to the top. It won't fit naturally, it'll feel wrong, and you should notice that. That's because that M piece that you cut out earlier has to go in that spot. And we're gonna put that in, put that in later. So don't force that to close, because then you're just gonna have to undo it. Now when you're putting these rectangle-ish things on, you're gonna want to start one corner at 0% offset, so that means the edges are flush, and then by the other edge, you're gonna want it to be about halfway through your foam, and in, in my case, that's five millimeters. And then when you're putting the two assemblies together. So when you're putting, putting the round bit section on or the uh, front half section on, just make sure that when you're lining those up, that you line them up along the 50% line. So it's halfway up the foam of whatever your bevel was. And for the, when you're connecting the round bit and the when you're, when you're connecting to that, the center to the outsides, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have re-beveled the edge. So it's going to, that's an outward bevel, but it's also gonna be followed by an inward bevel under it. And that's so that the parts can raise the detail that they want and then also have the space that they need to uh, glue together. And then I, I chose to put on this bottom piece last and then I just cut out one giant piece. I've made some valley cuts in the back and then I just glued it on. I saved this for last just because I thought it would be easier to do it this way when all of the other pieces were assembled and together because then I can just do it in one go.
Now, unfortunately, there are some details that are missing on this model that you're gonna wanna add. Uh, so, mainly just on the round bit. So on the round bit, I there's two raised details. Here's an image of the game reference. Basically, all I did to make the templates for this is I just took the templates that came with the pep. I added a little rectangle thing to the bottom right of the of the big one, and then I just took off some appropriate looking amount uh, from the sides. So the Left, right side, top, bottom, and I think that was it. I just took some off there and I made sure to save this template so that when I went to make the next bicep, or maybe you're making them both at the same time, but you're gonna wanna save the template either way to make sure that you can get this, get this detail symmetrical when you make the other bicep. So what I did was cut that out on some four millimeter foam and I just glued that on. And this, Freehanded detail is what allows us to hide the seam lines that we were unable to avoid on the round bit earlier in the first section. So you're definitely going to want to go through the work to add it. Same thing for the bottom half. I just took the template, shrunk it shrunk it down a little bit by trimming some of the edges down, and then I just cut it out and glued it on. There was nothing crazy. Uh, once you do that, you're gonna wanna take your Dremel, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that all of those edges on the inside of your rectangle cutout thing are smooth. And you're going, and I chose to smooth off the before, well, before I glued it on, I also chose to smooth off the edges of the freehanded detail itself, because personally, looking at the game references, I thought that they looked like they were supposed to be smoothed over or rounded edges, so I just rounded them, glued it on, and then smoothed out all of the seam lines with my Dremel so that they matched up perfectly. Now we got a couple details that we have yet to add and we don't want to forget about. So let's just go ahead and cut out this small, um, this rectangle that goes on the centerpiece and just glue that on. For this rectangle bit, I just, drum, I just cut it out with outward bevels and rounded them down. And then I glued a rectangle of four millimeter foam, right? Yeah, four millimeter foam. I just glued that on the, I just glued that onto the back. I just freehand cut it to shape, made it flush, and then glued the rectangle shape, the, you know, the detail. I just glued that onto it. And that was good. It's at this point that you're gonna wanna go over all your edges and just make sure that they're all smooth or if you or if you think some of them should be rounded go ahead and round those over uh, just dremel those down there's also some divots or rivet holes on this piece uh, unlike the gauntlet which seems to have extruded screw head details or whatever they are uh, the bicep seems to have intruded details so i just took my soldering iron and i just dipped it into the foam a bunch of times uh, be sure to wear a mask, uh, respir respirator while you're doing this because that smoke is not good for you.
Okay, thank you guys for watching. With that, you guys should finally have a fully finished Halo Reach bicep ready for sealing and painting. If you guys have any questions about this build or if something didn't make sense to you, feel free to leave a comment down below. I would love to help out with any issues that arise if I can. If you do also happen to make one of these and you post it on Instagram, definitely tag me at rndmranger. I would love to see it and feature it in a future video if I can. But until the next one, guys, I'll see you. Peace.